Hi, this is Frank Korb. Welcome to Art with Korb. Watercolor techniques. We're going to be dealing with eight different techniques and um, eight pieces of paper or uh, four pieces of paper in half. It's up to you. You're going to need, before we get started, to go ahead and find a piece of cardboard or something that's about four inches by four inches. Mine's about five by five. Um, so go ahead and while we're waiting for the credits to roll, go ahead and prepare yourself something to trace. Well, now that we've got our something to trace, I'm going to go through and on each of my eight pieces of paper, and like I said, you could use four pieces of paper and do one on each side, I'm going to trace this rectangle, this square, out eight times. And there is my final set of squares. I think I did nine of them. But uh, that's okay. I always want to have one extra. On two of these, what we're going to do is we're going to do some prep work. So I'm going to take my tracing object on one of them, and I'm going to draw a line across it. And this one is going to be labeled stippling. Stippling is when you use little tiny dots. This is going to be on the bottom. This is going to be wet on dry. And the top is going to be wet on wet. And we're going to get to that in just a moment. The other one is going to be lines or pattern, I suppose. And this is going to be, again, wet on dry. Now, to get to the wet on dry portion of it, we need to paint in this space. So what I'm going to do is I'm working on watercolor paper. I'm going to use my palette lid as my palette. I'm going to load up a good amount of paint. And I'm actually going to go transparent. I want to show the way lines behave oops on dry paint and so i'm using a flat brush you use what you've got i will be using wet brushes later or <laughs> wet brushes i'll be using round brushes later so i'm going to try and get a nice even wash on my paper i'm using a very nice watercolor paper you might be using something like uh, mixed media paper in a sketchbook, and that is fine. Mixed media paper is really good. If you find yourself using typing paper, what is typing paper? Printer paper, golly, that just tells me how old Mr. Korb is, Frank Korb is. Definitely remember what a typewriter is. Um, if you're using something like that, you're not going to have near as much success. So this is a nice even wash and that even wash looks lovely so i'm going to set this aside and i'm actually going to bring back my stippling and on the bottom again it's wet on dry so i am going to do another nice even wash here And I'm going to set this aside. While we're waiting for this to dry, one thing you're going to want to get a hold of, I forgot to mention some supplies, is you're going to want to have, and you might have to pause here for a minute to get your supplies. You're going to have to get, obviously, your watercolors and your paintbrushes and your paper and a card, which we've already gone through. And you're going to need a couple of things of water. I got soap in one and water in the other and you're going to need salt now i've got my standard table salt and i also have my 
kosher salt. This is stuff I like to sprinkle on my pretzels. So go ahead and pause here and go get your supplies. All right, welcome back. Now that these are dry, we're going to come back to those. We're going to start from the very beginning. The first one that we're going to do is we're going to be dealing with a wet on wet even wash and I'm going to put salt on the bottom portion of mine. So like I did before, except this time I'm going to take water and it should be clean water or clean-ish water and I'm going to paint the whole of this square or whatever shape you've got, rectangle, circle, whatever you're working in. I'm going to paint that in just like that. Now, because I'm working with really good watercolor paper, this is going to work beautifully. I'm going to load up my palette with a good solid color. And remember, this is going to be an even wash. So that means that my paint is going to be the same level, or I'm going to try to make it the same level of the same blue from top to bottom. I'm going to switch up from using a flat brush. I'm going to use a round. Clean that out. Whoops, cleaned out in the wrong water. There we go. And meringue. I'm going to use a round brush. So here's my round. I'm going to, at the top, and I'm going to also kind of tip my paper up a little bit, so I'm slightly downhill. I'm going to start at the top, and I'm going to put in a nice, even stroke across. I'm going to come back to my palette, and not only am I touching, but I'm overlapping, and I'm continually going back to my palette to reload my paintbrush with more of that blue paint or whatever color you so choose to use. One of the things you notice is that it's a nice soft edge down here at the bottom and gravity is pulling that paint down my picture plane. So you can see that gravity is working to my advantage as the painter. Kind of cleaning up the edges as I go. And this is a lovely even wash on a piece of watercolor paper. Now, while this is wet, I'm going to take my salt, and on one portion, I'm going to sprinkle just my table salt and see how that works. Hmm. And on the other side, I'll take my kosher salt. Whoa, that's a lot and I'm going to sprinkle that. I have to do this while it's still wet, and I'm gonna leave the top portion alone so you can just see the con con contrast, there's the word, you can see the contrast of, of the two. This is gonna take some time to dry, so I'm gonna set this aside. Don't wipe it off. The next one that I'm going to do is going to be a wet on dry even wash. And I'm not going to add salt to this one. So instead of taking my, my first brush and wetting the whole thing, I'm just going to take my blue paint or whatever color you're using. I might switch it up as we move along. I'm going to Again, kind of prop this up a little bit. I'm going to start at the top. And notice that it doesn't do anything at the bottom, but create a nice solid edge. I'm going to create an even wash. It does matter what kind of paper you're using. It's really important to use good watercolor paper, or in your case, perhaps mixed media paper, if that's what you've got. 
if you're gonna do a watercolor painting. It doesn't have to be really expensive watercolor paper, but you definitely want paper that's built for what it is. Paper differs. So I'm getting a nice, even wash with my, whoa, blue paints. Not a lot of change in it, and that's what I want. I'm overlapping a little bit more paint in there just to wrap it up. And I've got a nice, even wash all the way down to the bottom. Rinse this off. That is a good even wash. So what might you use an even wash for? I don't know, your base layers for things like skies or water or oceans or water and oceans are the same thing. Landscapes. And with watercolors, we can do a lot of different layering. And so that's an important part of what we do. So I'll set this one aside. The next one we're going to do is a wet on wet graded wash. Graded wash means that it's going to start at one value at the top and it's going to lighten up as we work our way down. So let me just do a different color. I'll get my rag out here and kind of clean out my palette a little bit. There we go. I mean, I could use blue throughout. That would be fine. So before I even wet the paper, I'm going to get my paints set up going from my palette, my paint palette, into my lid. You could use a paper plate as a lid, not a paper plate. You could use a small little glass plate, small little glass dish. I like using the lids that come with my paints. Those are handy. And now I'm going to, with my clean water, again, wet on wet, I'm going to do a wet wash of water all throughout this entire square. And if you're using a rectangle, you know. And then I'm going to, with my paints, kind of load that up, make sure I got enough pigment in here. Starting at the top, and again, I'm kind of propping my paper up a little bit. I'm going to go here and I'll set in another, a second level of red, a second layer. And instead of going to my palette, I'm going to go to my cup of water. Now notice that the wetness of the page is pulling the paint downward a little bit. And that's the nice thing about wet on wet is the wetness of the paper helps you fill that space evenly. Go back for some more clean water. All the way down till I'm at the bottom. And there's a beautiful wet on wet graded wash. Okay. And then I can dry my brush out one more time and just kind of use that as a sponge on the bottom and suck up that extra water at the bottom. So I've got a nice even, uh, I'm sorry, nice graded wash there. This next one, you got it, is going to be a wet on dry graded wash, graded wash. And dry will emphasize that because this paper is going to stay dry. Well, it's not going to stay dry. It's going to start dry. It can't stay dry. That would be ridiculous. So again, I'm going to load up my brush. And I'll really make sure that this pigment, that the paint is nice and pigmented. Again, holding my paper up at a slight angle. Gravity helps. I'm going to lay that in. Oh, that's good. That's good. That's a nice thick one. Oh, I wish I would have had that one the first time. Now, instead of going back to my palette, like I did with an even wash, you got it. I'm going to come over to the water. I'm going to overlap. And I can probably overlap a few strokes down. Note that I'm going very strong left to right. I'm not going up and down. Notice that it's kind of breaking at the bottom because there's no water. 
to blend it together. And overlap that, bring that down. Watercolors are great because they're transparent, they're fairly inexpensive, they're really fun to use. I know that's just my opinion, but you're here, so my opinion matters. And bring that down all the way to the bottom. And I've got a really nice, beautiful, wet, graded wash. Again, watercolor paper matters. Your dry, your mixed media paper is really helpful in this case. So there is a wet on dry graded wash. And in the end, you might not be able to tell much of a difference, but I see a little bit of a difference. How's my salt coming? Where's my salt? Got blow on that. Okay. The next one we're going to do is we're going to create a blend. This is going to be a graded, a graded blend, one color to another. So I'm going to start with wet on dry at the top. I'll just use the red again because I've got it handy here. Mix this up a little bit more intense. Wet on dry. Now, my second time through is going to be wet on dry and it's going to transition to wet on wet. So I added a little bit of water, a little bit more water. And so I'm transitioning down through here. Again, a little bit more water until it's almost, if not entirely, transparent all the way at the bottom. I still see a little bit of pink in there, but it's pretty transparent. Now I'm going to spin this over, flip it over, and I'm going to switch colors. I'll use, well, I've been kind of sticking with my blue and my red. I'll mix up a good amount of blue here. And now at the top, now it's different because now it's wet paint on wet paint. I could let this dry and have a very similar thing, but this is going to be wet on wet at the other end of it. So again, this is going to be wet paint on wet paper. And instead of going back to the palette, I'm going to, I'm going to clean that brush out. You can see how it's running down the edge a little bit. I'm going to pick that up and I'm going to transition from wet on wet, kind of backtrack a little bit, bring some more of that down. And as I get towards the center, I'm running out of paint, not only in my brush, but also in the bit that's pulling down. And there, I've got a nice transition. And you can see the wetness is starting to pull the capillary action, pull that paint down. And so we've got our nice gradual, a graded blend of color from one to another. Now. We've got a couple of samples here. We had our wet on dry. Here we go, lines and patterns. So this is gonna be my wet on dry. I'm gonna do the same thing here with wet on wet. Wet on wet lines or patterns. So I'm going to do my wet on dry first. And I'm pretty sure you can guess what's going to happen here. Maybe not, so we're just going to continue. When I do wet on dry with this, I'll use my red because it's here. If I paint lines in, nothing really happens. That paint just sits up on 
the surface of the blue paint. It just sits there, which is great. I can go from thick and thin to transparent. And it just sets there. I can do hatching and cross hatching. And that wet paint just sits on top of the dry paint. I can scumble inside there. These are all terms that are really important. Scumbling, lines, pattern. And it's the same. Now, while that one's setting up, I'll just kind of scooch that to the top so I come back to that later. We're going to do the same thing, except we're going to do wet on wet. So while I've got a good amount of blue sitting up here at the top, I'm going to do another even wash. And while it's still wet, so I go uh, wet on wet. I'm going to go wet on dry for the wash. run out of blue paint here. Mix up some more real quick. I went through that blue fast today. While this blue paint is still wet, I'm going to take my red paint from below and we're going to see what happens. Oh my goodness, I got a little green in there. Kind of backtrack up a little bit. I guess the last one I'll do, I'll have to have a little green in there. So while that's wet, I'm going to take my red paint. And I'm pretty sure you know what's going to happen. I'm going to paint on here. And that red paint is going to bleed out. So this is an important thing to remember as you're painting. If you don't want colors to bleed, you have to be careful and let things dry. You've got to let your colors, if you don't want things to bleed into one another, you have to let things dry. I can add pattern, hatching, cross hatching. I can do scumbling. But you notice that throughout this whole thing, those colors have bled out. They've gotten a little bit thinner. They've become more transparent. And so that's going to be the biggest difference between a wet on wet and a wet on dry set of lines. So here's a real good example back and forth between those two. Now the last one we're going to do, the last one we're going to talk about is our stippling. I, I do have one extra. I made nine. We only needed eight. So I've got wet on dry, wet on wet up here. I think my blue has turned into a green, and so that'll be fine. No big deal there. So if I do my wet on wet stippling, again, I'm going to put in a nice even wash. Whoops, there's more green. Oh, boy, yeah, look at that. Important to pay attention to what you're running out of when it comes to paint. That's okay. So while that is still wet up there, I'm going to stipple into that with my red. Now because this is green, it's going to turn into a neutral gray. But you see how those stipples really bleed out little explosions of color. And I know that, paying attention to what we've done for the past however long it's been, you know full well that when I bring those same dots down here, 
they're just going to sit. That, that wet paint is just going to sit on that dry paint. I know I should have brought a hair dryer into the studio today so I could demonstrate what happens to my salt when it's dry. And so that's what happens to your stippling. Go ahead and finish up your square. And lastly, oh, please be dry. Please be dry. It's not quite dry. And so if you've got a salted uh, painting, I paint added salt to this one, I can gently, well, it's still a little wet in some spots. You can gently brush that salt away after it's completely dry, of course. The kosher salt didn't dry quite as nicely as the other side. And that's just, that's what happens when you do demonstrations. You can see that I get this wonderful texture. And most all the salt is gone. You can really see some wonderful little tiny specks in here. And so that gives us lots and lots of great texture. So these are some different techniques in watercolor. We have, one well, more time for uh, a refresher. We have wet on, well, let me try to do these in order. If I can find them. I think I lost them. I lost one. Well, we had our wet on, oh, there it is. Wet on, wet, even wash with our salt. We had our wet on dry, even wash, no salt. We had our wet on wet graded wash. We had our wet on dry graded wash. We had our graded blended one color to another. We did a wet on dry with lines. We did a wet on wet with lines, and that one's still wet. And then we did stippling, wet on wet, and wet on dry. Thanks for joining me. These are great techniques as you continue to learn how to deal with watercolors. So I hope that you've enjoyed yourselves. I've had a great time. Thanks. We'll see you next time. Take care. Don't forget to subscribe, like me, share me. This should blow up. Be really popular. Bye.